let me uh, thank everybody for taking time out of their busy day. Um, and um, it, um, I was looking for a history of uh, of uh, Jews in Trenton, and I, I could find nothing. Um, so <laughs> I decided to do it myself. Um, and there's some over overarching questions as to what attracted Jews to Trenton. Trenton is like any other small town. It, um, and I've compared them to Schenectady, Rochester, Harrisburg, um, Elizabeth, Camden, um, the Passaic, Patterson. It, it, it's virtually uh, identical in terms of um, the way that the Jewish community started. It did not work. Uh, Trenton had an enormous manufacturing business. Um, they specialized in, in rubber, they specialized in ceramics, uh, not only earthenware, uh, plates and, 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 and such, but sanitary. Uh, uh, ceramics, such as uh, bath tubs, um, so that uh, when in, when indoor plumbing came in, um, they were they were busy. And it went, indoor plumbing came in around in the nineteen teens, nineteen twenties. Um, don't sell that short. I, I asked my aunt when there was a landing on the moon. My aunt was born in the eighteen nineties at the time. Um, what was the most important thing that you've uh, seen in your time? And uh, there's been a lot of stuff, uh, including roads and whatever. She said indoor plumbing. <laughs> uh, um, initially, um, the Jews were, were not involved with the, with the big manufacturers. Um, uh, Sam and I talked about Roebling, and uh, Roebling uh, in 1900 employed one out of every three people. Um, oftentimes, uh, big manufacturers would go into Europe and uh, recruit. Um, <laughs> there was in, in 1882 uh, there uh, that was restricted by the uh, by the uh, federal government. Uh, but they they still did it. The the um, the, the Jews uh, initially um, were peddlers of, uh, of the manufacturing um, from Trenton. Uh, uh, to give you an example, um, Albert Stark, who's a prominent attorney, his uh, his grandfather um, used to sell. Um, earthenware, ceramics, seconds uh, in New York. He, he went to Trenton and uh, he went to New York. Then New York had a um, had a plague, uh, and he moved to Trenton. So that the Stark family moved to Trenton um, for for that reason. Number one, um, there there were goods, and number two. Uh, there were um, there 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 was a plague of yellow fever. Uh, Trenton was a, was the capital of the, of the United States for um, for a year when they had yellow fever in uh, in Philadelphia. They they moved the capital to Trenton. Um, they uh, after a while they got enough money to open up stores and sell goods. Um, I can only tell you about my 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 grandfather and his uh, four brothers. They started out as peddlers. They went from Trenton to Lambertville to Flemington, back to Trenton in a week. Uh, and uh, they opened uh, they opened stores. One of them still around. The one in Lambertville, the uh, the, the hardware store. Um, it's over three years old. Uh, but they all opened up uh, dry goods stores. Um, the Jewish professionals uh, 
were practically no um, who immigrated here. People who immigrated, the Jews who immigrated were poor. Um, they were uh, they were poor. They had to make themselves. Uh, uh, they had to make themselves in in in, um, in 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 the new country. Second generation, um, they found education, but uh, the first generation was uh, was was tough. This is they lived for the most part. At least the Russians. Um, there, there are three waves of, of immigration. Um, one were the Sephardics, uh, those people who were from uh, from Spain. Uh, initially, um, they were they were expelled in 1492, uh, but they uh, they had they um, they went to um, a lot of them went to to, to Holland. And there were Dutch colonies in the Caribbean. And um, the first uh, the first Jew in Trenton was uh, David Narr. He owned the uh, Trenton Gazette. Um, he was uh, prominent in 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 politics. Uh, his family was from Portugal um, by way of St. Thomas, um, and. Then the German uh, Jews started to come uh, in, in the 1840s and 1850s. Um, most of the Germans uh, became uh, proprietors of, of uh, menswear. So and they owned stores and they were very prominent in the community. But the, the first you'll see that the that the, the, um, the the first the first uh, cemetery was in uh, 1857, and it's it's in Trenton on Vroom Street, um, so it's still there. So uh, they 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 they. Uh, um, had a congregation actually before in people's houses, but they they uh, incorporated uh, the cemetery in 1857, and then they incorporated themselves in 1850, 1858. Um, okay, so here here we go. Um, the the Germany and Austria, um, and in Russia, uh, the pale of the settlement. Now, 75 percent of the pale of the settlement, which is here, this uh, Jew, Jews are restricted only in an air, a certain area in Russia. Russia, the Russian Empire was humongous, it still is. Um, and this is now, uh, this is now Bala Russia, and um, and and the the uh, the uh, country that is at war. Uh, so, uh, you know, that, that, that was all, um, it, it was about 15% Jewish. Some towns were more than that, obviously. World War II, um, the uh, Nazis, uh, basically extinguished the, uh, the uh, Jewish population, but, um, most of the, most of the people who came, um, to Trenton were from Grodno or Minsk or, the depths or 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 Kovno or Corland, um in in the in the upper part on uh, what would be um, a pile of Russia. Um, then they settled in South Trenton. Now South Trenton was an Irish neighborhood. South Trenton was um, a poor neighborhood. Um, it's in a bad location. If uh, the river ever overflows. South Trenton overflow, <laughs> uh, and I have the names of um, some of the some of the people who uh, who live there. Actually, they own stores, and they all lived above the stores. So that was the way that it was. Um, they uh, they started 
in the 1880s. And um, uh, this was up until probably 1920. Um, they were in South Trenton uh, from Lamberton Street, uh, Union Street, which is no more, and Decatur Street, which is no more. So um, they established Jewish institutions, the first um, Orthodox Russian synagogue was in 1883, Brothers of Israel. Um, then uh, there was a breakaway in 1901 called the People of Truth. That was on Union Street. So was the Brother Brothers of Israel it was on Union Street. And then two doors, three doors away was the Workers of Truth, Moss and a, uh, uh, Orthodox Russian synagogue. Um, and that opened in 1905. And then we had um, a different ethnic group. We had a Hungarian. Um, mostly the Germans belonged to our Sinai, okay? They were all Orthodox. There, there weren't any, uh, any denominations in, in Judaism at that time. Um, Ahavath Israel um, was the Hungarian shul. And they used to they used to pay their dues in Hungarian money. Uh, then we got to uh, to to move out of South Trenton when people uh, had some money, and the trolley line was was extended to the Cat Walter Park area, um, which is a, a whole other thing. You ought to do something on Cat Walter Park. It was designed by the same. Uh, landscape designer that designed Central Park in New York, among other things. Um, it's a gem. It's a, an absolute gem. And, um, and the whole building in the western part of uh, of Trenton was built around um, Kedwilder Park. Okay. Um, they had <clears throat> the the Jews had certain eating patterns, so <clears throat> they had kosher but eight kosher butchers and six kosher uh, bakers. Um, and uh, the uh, Talmud Torah means <clears throat> that they had a, a religious school, uh, which they uh, um, and uh, um, one hundred. Before the common era, um, there was um, a, 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 a law that um, the people should the people should be um, educated, and um, the, the education was important. Um, this is an example. Um, uh, it's a recent picture, but uh, well, fairly recent. You see the cars. <laughs> Um, of uh, what the housing looked like. Uh, this is Union Street to Ferry Street. Uh, this is a, a synagogue, <clears throat> a rendering of the synagogue of the Workers of Truth. This is the small synagogue. Um, and um, th this was Achenu B'nai Israel, which, was, which is translated Brothers of Israel. Uh, 1885, 1881, you know, somewhere in that area. Um, my great grandfather, who I never met, uh, was the president of that synagogue as well as the president of the People of Truth. Um, on Market and Jackson Streets, which now you see a bar, uh, it is a bar. Um, I don't know what it was then. But uh, that you know, that's the way it looked. That there's the store here, and above it, people live. Okay, this is uh, Cone's Bakery. Um, very. Uh, uh, this was on Market Street, um, and next to it was Kunis's Bakery. Not to be outdone. All right. There was also Kramer's Bakery. Um, which I don't have a picture of, but Kramer is uh, still in business. Um, and then we have um, a, a store owned by Morris Olinsky on Union Street. 
And this is a picture of what it looked like. Um, two stories, um, you can see above uh, near the roof, uh, the name Olinsky, and um, the store below, and uh, the uh, the Venetian blinds were the the uh, living space. Um, Market Street. This is another picture of Market Street. Street. Uh, it's not a good picture, but kosher butcher. Um, now, when and. This is this is a warehouse um, in in the area on Cooper Street. When when people got here, um, they had they were they were um, they had skills. They had skills in the trades. Um, the, the problem is that <clears throat> nobody would allow them in the trades. The guilds were uh, were uh, were ruled by the nativists, and um, they they certainly wouldn't allow Jews into their profession. So, what the Jews did besides uh, peddling and commercial areas, um, went to school. In 1915, where the the Jews were no more than uh, than two and a half percent of the population of Trenton. But in 1915, um, that there are zero accountants. Um, there are zero accountants because the the uh, the uh, the 13th the um, uh, amendment for taxation was passed in 1914, so there was no income tax at the time. Um, Six percent were physicians. That was uh, three times the population of Trenton. Uh, Twelve percent were lawyers, and um, the law to Jews came very easily because um, there is such a thing as Jewish law, which uh, is uh, is the foundation really of Anglo-Saxon law, with precedent and uh, uh, rules of evidence and, and whatever. Um, it's similar, so um, that was that was easy. I had a uh, 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 a friend, um, uh, it was my father's friend actually, who went to um, he went to a yeshiva in New York um, for high school, and he he went to school from seven to five, seven uh, in the morning to five in 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 the in the afternoon, uh, six days a week. They had off for the Sabbath. And then he went to the Wharton School, of Pennsylvania, and he said, "I had two classes a day. It was simple." So uh, he he got along well. Um, there were a lot of druggists because Jews, for whatever reason, were not uh, allowed to um, go to medical school. And the only uh, the, um, the only thing I could point to is. Uh, in 1920, there was a, a study done at uh, CCNY of the people who uh, applied to medical school, uh, non-Jews, 75% uh, got into medical school, Jews were 20%, and NYU turned out the same kind of student. So you had that uh, discrimination uh, to overcome. 1935, it got better in terms of the schooling and the professions, the accountants all of a sudden were 36%. Uh, remember, this is 2.5% uh, of the community, right? Um, the physicians were 13%, the uh, lawyers were 25%. And then in 1956, I did 46, but 1956, um, fully, well, almost half of the accountants were were Jewish. Uh, a quarter of the physicians were Jewish. Uh, Twenty thirty seven percent of the of the attorneys were Jewish, and twenty percent of the druggists. A lot of the druggists uh, were uh, denied entry into um, into medical school, so they're they're always druggists. Um, they establish. 
philanthropic and social institutions besides synagogues. Um, the, the people who came over uh, who uh, were immigrants uh, were, were not all that um, uh, observant. <laughs> Um, they were observant because uh, uh, everybody in their community was observant, but they weren't really that observant. Um, but so what they did is that they had a, um, uh, they set up a mutual aid society. They set up uh, a democratic club. They set up, a, they, they set up a Republican club. They set up the cemeteries. They set up a mikveh which is a, a Jewish ritual bath. They set up the Kachunki. Well, what's the Kachunki? Um, let's say that's, that's where the high rollers went to gamble. Um, and um, then you, you, had, you had other or organizations. You had the Working Men's Circle and you, 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 you had other, you had the YMHA. Um, and the YMHA actually was uh, very beneficial because it uh, got together the, the German Jews, the Russian Jews, and the Hungarian Jews. And they uh, had one place to meet and uh, they could uh, bridge, they, they could bridge the, uh, the gaps in, in, in the cultures. Um, I have the fall of Trenton's economy, uh, which is arguable, but um, it started really in the 1920s when uh, Roebling, remember Roebling was this huge, huge company uh, who also had the, uh, the, uh, they, the, 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 they also owned the majority of Otis Elevator and uh, while those skyscrapers were going up in uh, in New York and Philly and wherever, um, the, the elevators were Otis elevators, and they they used the Roebling steel. Uh, and then after World War II, um, you, uh, we saw uh, that the uh, that there, there are a lot of mergers and acquisitions of national companies. What generally happened is that the company that was based in Trenton, the home company. Uh, no longer was based in Trenton. Um, uh, it, uh, uh, Roebling was now Colorado Fuel and Iron, so they had Denver. You know, uh, no no Trenton. So they 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 lost. Uh, besides Radables, they they lost um, big uh, big givers to the Trenton community. Um, in the third generation, you see the. The increases in the uh, in the in the professions, um, and then it, you you have um, uh, the forty Jewish philanthropic uh, organizations, and by this time there is a conservative movement, a reform movement, and an or and there 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 were, there were um, down to two Orthodox synagogues. Um, now. Uh, it, Here's where I get a problem. I wrote the book and I wrote the book. I didn't have, I, I, I didn't put live people in there because I was told that when you write a history, um, the people who, uh, who, who are not in it gets, get sore. So I didn't. So these people are, are uh, for the most part, dead. There are, there are a couple that are alive, but these are famous Jewish uh, personalities. I don't know if, if you know that a, a Judge Foreman um, was appointed in the 1920s. He was a federal judge. Sidney Goldman um, was the first leader of the Jewish uh, Historical Society. Uh, he, was a, uh, he, 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 he was a judge for years um, in the state government. Benjamin Kaufman, uh, who's my uncle, was a Congressional Medal of Honor winner in World War I. Uh, and he was also the national commander of the Jewish War Veterans during the Second World War. Saul Weinstein was a, a comic writer. He, he wrote um, uh, 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 Bagels and Locks or 
Goldfinger or Enlocks or something like that. Uh, he was he was a funny guy. Alex Siegel was a was a director of, for early TV in the fifties. Saul Linowitz uh, was the CEO of Xerox, and uh, then he became uh, the head of the Organization of American States. Judith Lloyd is still around. Uh, she's won Tonys uh, in on Broadway. Uh, Zelman came, uh, it was Zelman Lefkowitz when I went to school with him, but he, he became Zelman King. He was a, a director. Richard Kind is, is still around. You'll see him from time to time. Uh, Levins, both of the uh, Henry Levin and Peter Levin were, um, uh, were in show business. Um, both of them uh, very prominent, but uh, very prominent in the, in the 30s and 40s. All right, before our time. Mike Bloom was probably the best sports person to come out of Trenton. Uh, nobody heard of him because he, he, he played uh, basketball from the early 30s uh, to uh, the early 50s. Um, um, but he was, he was all American at Tempo and um, he, um, he played pro ball before the NBA. The NBA started in 1951. Um, Tal Brody is still around um, and lives in Israel. Um, and uh, he was, you know, he was uh, <clears throat> he was drafted in the NBA for the NBA, um, but he went to uh, he played for for Israel on the Ma Maccabee team. Uh, in the Olympics, and they won uh, in 1981. They won the European Cup. Uh, Tony Siegel was a, uh, a vice president. Uh, he was in baseball for 40 years, um, and he was a vice president at the at the end of his career uh, with the um, with uh, the San Francisco Giants. So he has a couple of World Series rings with her pretty gaudy. Uh, and Amy Robinson is also uh, 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 in, show, in show business. Um, and she was from a very prominent family in, in, in Trenton. She's, she's still around. Um, so that's, 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 that's the scope. I mean, there's, there's a lot of information um, that I don't, that I, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I could talk a long time on, on all of this stuff, but if there are any questions directed, I would appreciate it. The Trenton community is symbolic of um, a lot of other small communities. It's uh, unlike New York or Chicago or Philadelphia uh, or Detroit. So um, it, it's almost identical. The only thing that Trenton did uh, passed over that, um, most of the uh, Jewish communities had was uh, the needle trades. Um, for whatever reason, the needle trade, they, they had some uh, in the needle trade, but in New York in, in the 19 teens, uh, about two thirds of the people worked in, in the garment industry. Uh, that passed over to, I don't know why. So um, I see that Anne Blumenthal had a question. I don't know, Anne, if you can unmute yourself and um, and ask it, or I can I can try to read it from the chat. As I can read it, so let me find it here. Why did several of the Trenton synagogues have truth in their names, and was that common elsewhere? That that. Th that was common. Uh, uh, the word MS is uh, truth. And um, uh, the the Anchi MS or the Anchi Fife were, um, they were just the common names of synagogues. As I, I mean, <laughs> Brothers of Israel was really Achenu B'nai Yisrael. Um, and uh, I didn't want to say that today because nobody would understand that. <laughs> but it means brothers of Israel. Questions from here? 
Anyone have a question or comment? Uh, just uh, you mentioned that the justice complex replaced the old neighborhood. Yes. I'm kind of interested in that transition. Uh, apparently, the, the Jewish population left, but I assume the houses were still here until uh, uh, whenever the 19th. complex or the clearance or urban renewal or whatever right. that neighborhood was. Right. So, so were they in the, in, 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 in after the. the it, well, in the in 1930s, uh, there wasn't much movement in uh, because of the depression. But uh, it, but uh, those who were rich enough, stable enough, uh, did move, and they moved into areas that were developed adjacent to Cadwalder Park. Right. Moved into the western section, and uh, our son I built a synagogue um, in. 19 of all years 1928 uh, in the western section um, and then Adith Israel uh, built a synagogue around 1950 um, that was down the street um, so they were the two large synagogues in in Trenton um, they had moved to the western section where uh, Jewish people were so I'll yeah, I'll say a little bit more about the transition of the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, that the map that uh, Mr. Finkel showed with uh, had the Lamberton Street, uh, Union, and Decatur. That little neighborhood was literally we are right across from where those streets were, and the Justice Complex is on top of those streets. Uh, by the time that all happened in my urban renewal in the late 50s, 60s. It had become mostly an African-American neighborhood. And that neighborhood, uh, along with other things in the central corridor of Trenton was redlined. Um, the, um, the Federal Housing Administration during the New Deal had set up, I think many of you know, had set up uh, a rating system for neighborhoods based on things like the percent African-American, the percent immigrant, the average income and so on. And so certain neighborhoods were said to be red, in other words, uh, high risk for loans and so on. So there became to be disinvestment. But by that time, as uh, Art says, many of the Jewish people had moved. I did see yeah. another question. Um, Carol, did you have a question? I thought I saw your hand up. Uh, I just wanted to say, this is kind of like a joke, but after this program, why don't we all go to Weinstein's for a corned beef sandwich? Because <laughs> <laughs> that was, um, oh my gosh, that's, you know, on the lighter side, not really, it was fattening, but um, uh, how long has Weinstein's gone from the Lawrence Shopping Center, would you say? Wouldn't you say 20 years? Yeah, yeah. You know, and Weinstein was uh, there uh, in, in South Trenton. There was Fox's yeah. del uh, Delicatessen, and um, there the, um, there was Siegel's Delicatessen. Alex Siegel, the, the director, that his, his parents don't own that. Um, and um, then Weinstein's, uh, when they moved, when the, the Jewish population moved to, to West Trenton, uh, to the western part of the town, uh, Weinstein's opened on, on Hermitage Avenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, and uh, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, I was there. Right. <laughs> 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 a couple uh, of questions from here, actually several questions from here. I'm gonna let my, my person who's been so generous with this tech support ask the first one. Does um, the community move to West Trenton and it's still there or, or eventually it left West Trenton as well? So the, the question Art was whether yeah. the a Jewish community that moved to the West Trenton to, and set up the synagogues there and I remember them on Bellevue Avenue, what yeah. happened after that? <laughs> after that, I. I I'll, gi I'll give you a little vignette. I taught uh, religious school uh, in the 60s, um, and um, which is a thankless job because the kids don't want to be there. <laughs> um, so trying to teach them is tough. In any event, in 19, 
1964, about half of them lived in Trenton. In 1966, about 10% lived in Trenton. So there are the riots. Uh, and that was a, a, a real demarcation. I had a cousin who went to, uh, was in Trenton High School uh, in 67, and they had riots in Trenton High School. So uh, it, it was, uh, it, it was such that, that they, they moved. Now, eventually the fourth generation moved to adjacent uh, uh, areas such as Ewing and Lower Makefield, Yardley, Princeton. Mm -hmm. Another group of here now now the one of yeah, I think both of the synagogues you mentioned, one is now another a church, a Christian church of some kind. Yeah. I don't know what happened. That's Har Sinai that was right across from. Yeah, Har, Har Sinai is a, is, is a church. Um, but, you know, the first synagogues were churches. Um, oh. the, uh, Har Sinai's first synagogue on, uh, uh, on, uh, on Willow Street was a Methodist church. Hmm. Um, and um, I think the Brothers of Israel synagogue, I'm talking about the 1880s, was also a church. Hmm. So, um, um, you know, it, 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 it's kind of, you know, it, it, they're very holy places. <laughs> Our sign I sold to the church. Yeah, that's right. And they moved to a property they bought in Yes. I moved to Pennington. Um, they don't, they, they are, they're a shadow of what they, what they used to be. What synagogue is it? Mm -hmm. That was a comment about what synagogue is it. Yeah, and that's probably, that's true of many church dominant or Christian denominations as well. Uh, Pat, you had a question. Yeah, I don't think um, Mr. Finkel mentioned this, but wasn't there a very small synagogue on Montgomery Street, right around the corner from the uh, library? Did you hear that, Art? Yeah, I don't think so. There was a small synagogue in back of the Greenwood House on Greenwood Avenue. Um, but that was really for the residents of the Green of the Greenwood House, which is a, a facility for um, for the uh, seniors. Uh, Greenwood House now is is in New England Township. Um, it's still named Greenwood House, but it was uh, it was on Greenwood Avenue, and there was a synagogue there. Um, uh, uh, it was small, uh, but it it was it was. It was it was utilized. Um, I have all the um, incorporations of synagogues and, and um, all the other Jewish organizations, for that matter, and it's in the book. Um, but um, there is one congregation um, that I have the I have the uh, articles of incorporation, but it never got off the ground, and it was right before. Um, the um, the uh, Anchi MSO that opened the uh, People of Truth. Mm. Um, so I suspect that there is a, there there is a uh, 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 that Brothers of Israel got too populated and um, they formed another congregation. Mm. Um, another question from here. Yes. My question is, Okay, so so we've now just I wasn't I don't think I heard clearly art. So Greenwood House was um, set up for was it for um, the agent? The agent. Okay, got it. The agent. Yeah, that that's um, part of the um, part of the Jewish culture. Uh, to care for the aged, uh, the infirm, the poor, and um, that that had been there for a long time in, in on Greenwood Avenue. There used to be a Jewish population on Greenwood Avenue. 
mm-hmm. uh, in the in the Wilbur section. But uh, and there used to be uh, uh, Brothers of Israel had moved there right in back of uh, where you get into the railroad station. And and uh, if you go the back way, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and Greenwood House was right at the end, right at the corner of uh, where that synagogue was. Mm-hmm. I, Carol, I think I saw that your hand was up again. Yeah, I seem to be bringing up the food questions. I think I need to join Weight Watchers. But um, Kramer's Bakery is now in Yardley. Is that the same Kramer's, right? No. Um, I, I, I know um, the owner of Kramer's Bakery. His, his name actually was Cranmer, which was the first archbishop of, um, of the uh, Anglican Church. Mm. because like if i need things for, i'm jewish obviously so if i need special like breads and cakes for the holidays i go to yardley because they yeah they well have holidays yeah. and stuff so they, i just thought it was they, like from from the trenton area that they moved over they have um um uh, the 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 uh, dietary laws which generally i would say 85 percent of the jews don't follow anymore i do but yeah. But but most people don't. Um, they th- there are certain restrictions uh, with certainly with meat, but uh, also with dairy products. Mm-hmm. And uh, it has it, it, those people who um, keep those dietary rules uh, need a, a sanction supervision by um, by rabbi. So we just one more question, Mr. Finkel. So is um, the Kramer's Bakery that you say is still in existence somewhere? Where is it? Kramer's Bakery is uh, it it was in um, in um, Chambersburg. Now I think it's in Hamilton Township. It mm-hmm. is OK, because we used to go to the um, the Greenwood Avenue one and wait yeah. online like Saturday night, like 12 o'clock. Oh, at night yeah, to yeah. The hot you bagels. get warm uh, bagels. Yeah, warm, it was uh, crazy. Yeah. It was right. so much fun. Yeah. Okay, Weight Watchers, I'm joining tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, this has been fascinating. Yeah. I was looking at his list of famous people. I didn't, or maybe I'm mistaken. I thought Mo Bird came from Trenton. Mo Byrne. Mo Berg. Mo Berg. Mo Berg was a famous baseball oh, yeah. player, spy. Yeah. 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 Mo Berg was was a famous baseball player, but uh, he wasn't from Trenton. No. Oh. No. No. <laughs> right. Right. We'll claim him, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Any others? Thank you so much, Mr. Finkel. Um, and we have recorded this, and we'll try to make it nice and put it on our website for people who couldn't uh, come in today. Um, And I really look forward to you uh, working with this student at the College of New Jersey and uh, helping him tell more of the story even, uh, you know, with all of all of your background of our neighborhood, which was right across the street from where we are now. Right. Thank you. Um, Sam Sam is going to coordinate that. He has my number and email and uh, my DNA and uh, <laughs> all, all, all the other things. So I, I do want to uh, communicate with, the, with the, uh, the, the student at the College of New Jersey. I have two students from Princeton that I'm working with uh, that are doing uh, um, parts of, uh, of the history of Trenton. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I, I have, we have to keep in touch with you about that so that those students will learn from them too. Thank you again. Thank you everyone who joined us today um, and um, stay tuned for more things from us and we will be back in touch with you. Thanks all. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.